are Yahweh, you are Yahweh. Hey, you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh, our Father and Omega. You are Yahweh, our Father. Lift him up together, say, you are. Everybody in this room, come and open up your mind. You are Yahweh. Let's declare it together, say, you are. Uh, you are Yah. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Our Father and Hope. Hey, you are. One more time, declared. You are Yahweh. You are. You are Yahweh, you are. Hey, you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh, Alpha and O. You are Yahweh, you are Yahweh. Alpha. in you Jesus I have confidence in you dance in you anytime and any day I have confidence in you Jehovah Mo yeah. Tani Kande Kondo Kondo Boroko Tembaro da Zunde Ikara Bandu Pikali Pande Paride de Boda Bozudiza Ilongu du Kanda Katina Kate Pereketala I Berenge Dandu Kodongo to Boroko Du Kalakada Fazes Zosa Oh, I am a catilla di fra de bella di da tisa. Oh, I have confidence in you, Jesus. Jesus, I have confidence in you. Savior. I have confidence in you any time and any day I have confidence in you Jehovah Mo oh Jehovah Mo hey hey
have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You look beyond me, oh. I'm the one. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You look beyond me, oh. Hey, I'm the one. It is you who have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You look beyond me, oh. Hey, I'm the one. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You look beyond me, oh. I'm the one you have shown me mercy you have shown me mercy you look beyond me oh uh, I'm the one you have shown me mercy you have shown me mercy you look beyond me oh I'm the one you have shown me mercy you have shown me mercy you look beyond me oh I'm the one you have shown me mercy you continue to show me mercy you look beyond me I'm the one you have shown me mercy you have shown me mercy you look beyond me your mercy found me You look beyond me, oh. I'm the one you have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You look beyond me, oh. Yeah. I'm the one you have shown me mercy, mercy, mercy. You have shown me, you have shown me, you have shown me, you have shown me, hey, I'm the one. You have shown me mercy over and over and over and over, over and over. You look beyond me, oh, I'm the one. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You look beyond me. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, your hands has provided. Great is your faithfulness Lord on to me oh great is your faithfulness great is 
your faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have needed your hands has provided great is your faithfulness great is your faithfulness when I need a shelter great is your faithfulness when I need any help great is your faithfulness when I need a food on my table great is your faithfulness Lord on to me Jesus. God bless you, Pastor Philip. So I clap for Pastor Philip. Pastor Philip. I mean, come stand here this morning. I haven't seen you since. <laughs> since Corona. <laughs> Corona pandemic. My God. Don't worry. No, don't stand here with you. <laughs> this is the holy ground. This is a holy ground. Hannah. My God, I miss you. Chai, I left him in Nigeria. You guys know I went. We played your video yesterday. Right? Was it yesterday or two days ago? That was his program. The one that I was preaching. So I left him at that program in Nigeria. And he didn't come back to America till five months later. There was a lockdown. And he just did many things in Nigeria. You practically ran from there. <laughs> and then I didn't even know I was going to bring him. Camera, I hope you're showing Pastor Philip. I didn't know I was going to bring Pastor Philip to the program. I, I had asked my um, keyboardist, I think two weeks ago, I asked Love. And I said, Love, I'm thinking of bringing Pastor Philip. You think you got this? Because all the 24 hours program that I do, Pastor Philip and Love are here. Because whenever this Love is here, Pastor Philip will go and sleep somewhere <laughs> so two of them can rotate love said um if you don't want to ma, i'll be fine by myself i said okay okay and plus you know it's saving my money now but god had a different plan while i was showing his video yesterday while i was preaching in the program god was telling me bring him bring him so it was while the video was on 
that I messaged you. Remember, I said, I'm currently live. We're showing your, your program. And then I said, I didn't want to bring you, but, you know, I have a program. You didn't even know it was the next day or two days. You thought you, thought you had time off. He said, let me, let me rearrange my schedule and I'll let you know. And then, boom, he said, I think he always has a way of making time for me. Because I haven't brought him here since he came back. We haven't really done anything because of the whole pandemic. And before you know it, you just, you just got your ticket yesterday. Yeah. You guys didn't give me a mic. Take your mic now. You know? So before you know it, it's phew, everything was just like that. And even today, he messaged me. I didn't know, but I was in the spirit. He said Uber was slow at the airport. Like, yeah. you came, like, at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. Like, you arrived so late. Like, after 12. After 12. You see, what, while you were worshiping, God was speaking to me about Pastor Cornelius. How he was using that scripture, trust in the Lord with all your heart. How it seemed like he was not going to be here. But he came. And I was live today, or yesterday when he came. It's the same thing as Pastor Philip. You know how you never thought somebody will come, but God knows they'll be there. Even if it's the last flight. And God just messed up Pastor Philip's plan, Pastor Cornelius' plan, and two of you are here. Pastor Philip, did you ever know you will be here today? I did not know I was going to be here. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so when I message you, don't tell us now. How are you feeling? Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good <laughs> to see everyone. It's good to see you all. It's good to see everyone. Um, this must have been yesterday or two days ago. The woman of God messaged me and... Uh, um, ironically... I think it must have been about two years ago, uh, two weeks ago, rather. I actually thought about it the first. Yes, because we do it every year. Every year. So I think my body is just accustomed to being here on the 31st. <laughs> and for some reason, I, I just thought I may not be able to make it this year uh, because I had um, uh, committed myself to... Um, to building a, uh, a few people um, and I was committed to ensuring uh, that they go over uh, crossover cross over to the next year 2021 uh, and so when I got a message uh, about two days ago um, I said Holy Spirit you're trying to mess up my program again <laughs> this is 2020 the annoying, did you guys feel something at that program and he was the one playing the keyboard for me. So I was like, Father. Wow. So I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be here. I think and I know and I believe that it's the Holy Spirit that orchestrated That's it. That's right. Um, I, I believe that you don't have the ability to go somewhere unless the Holy Ghost allows you. That's right. There is no, uh, uh, nothing that anyone can do or speak. Uh, invariably once you're in the spirit if the Holy Spirit does not impress it, it in your heart and so uh, everybody already knows what this house carries that's right uh, it's, Pastor Philip is back it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it <don't take laughs> you know he always talks about this kind of thing <laughs> You don't come back. You know, I, 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 I am so excited to be back. Um, you know, whilst I was sitting there, you were talking. Um, I didn't even know you were here. My eyes were closed. Though. Your eyes were closed. You were talking to me, but you were speaking to God's people. Wow. But you were talking to the church in general. You were speaking to the body of Christ because uh, no one has longevity. No one has sustenance no one has continuity no one has the ability to have the same power without Jesus that's right without the Holy Spirit meaning that you will expire if God is not inspiring you it's true it's just a matter of time 
My God. So if God tells you something and you're not following it, uh, your deadline is just waiting for you ahead. Yes. If you've been sent and you don't go and you're doing your own thing and it's just a matter of time Jesus said follow me mm -hmm. and, and while she was speaking I, I quickly uh, looked in the Bible in Luke chapter 9 and verse 58, 59 and then 60 and then 61 and then 62 and Jesus interestingly gives a prerequisite mm. for following in verse 58 he said follow me and then in verse 59 someone quickly said I, I want to follow you I, I really want to follow you but give me just one minute I mm. got to go bury my father hey. let me make funeral arrangements for him to be buried Jesus turns back and look at him and said uh, you, you don't get it uh, <laughs> you don't have time to bury your father that's right he says let the dead bury their dead Hi. And in verse 60, another one says to him, okay, let me follow you. And, and, and then he turns back to that one and, and says, yes, you can. But he says, can I just go home and make some arrangements and, and I'll be right back to follow you. Jesus in verse 61, 62 turns and looks at him. He said, he said to him, and I, I, I like the version, the version says that you don't have time to wait he said the kingdom of God cannot wait till tomorrow it's now it is now that's right and so when you started to speak there was God <laughs> it, I don't it was know. God <laughs> but what was also impressed in my heart is that God has given you the ability to go through uh, the waves and the storms mm. God has given you power because see this is how you know God is with someone. Did you know that Jesus had a church? And in his church, we had so many members. One day, 5,000 members show up. And the next day, the 5,000 people disappeared. After they've eaten all the food. After they've eaten the bread and fish. The bread and fish they disappeared. Empty. Woman of God, do you know that some people would quit? After that. After that. They need to preach again. They would stop. But you know God is with someone. Not because of the crowd. Mm -hmm. When they can express their love. Regardless of the 5,000 people that did not show up the next day. Mm, my God. It continued. You know, sometimes we think that continuity is because we have uh, uh, a certain number the, the, of people. The That's no, right. No, 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 no. It's not. It is God that gives you the ability to continue in spite of the people or with the people. It's God that, that's how you know God is with someone. It's true. Despite all my that's persecution you know. that I went through, I'm still here. Man of God, you've been through a lot. And you saw them now. You've been through the storms. <laughs> And I stand here to say that God is with you. Amen. Thank you. God is Jesus. with you. Because once I sat down there, the only thing I kept hearing is says, I'm with her. Okay. I'm with her. I am with her. I am with her. Woe to you if you go when you've not been sent. Mm. Woe to you if you go and it's not with you. Woe to you. If you step one step ahead and, and it's not in your step. Mm, my God. I just want to say I love you so much. You for too. this work that you continue to do for God's people and, 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 I, and I'm standing here now and, and the Spirit of God is impressing something in my heart and, and I like to say this real quick. Um, and I know it's for you and, and for God's people and, and here's what, what I'm hearing you know it's saying to me that he he went to the cross and he died but listen to this 
and and he rose again he was with the disciples for three and a half years before he was crucified and died when he rose he stayed on the earth for 40 days before he was ascended in those 40 days Peter and the rest of the disciples they left what he told them to do and they went a fish woman of God they went to fish they left the work in spite of the miracles they saw in spite of the signs the wonders in spite of the impartation of the word they left and they went to fish and, and, and here's what he's telling me with that because the Bible says that Jesus showed up in the midst of them whilst they were toiling uh, Jesus decided to appear to them and, and, and he said this to them now they said friends why are you guys toiling so hard because they were toiling then and he spoke to them now he said just dip this thing on the other side and and long story short they caught a fish and yes the interesting thing they gathered together and jesus began to eat with them and jesus asked peter do you love me peter said i love you and he says to him He asked him the second time, do you love me? Feed my sheep. He asked him the third time, do you love me? Feed my lambs. The only definition to prove your love to God is to feed the sheep. Jesus said, I want you to prove that you love me. If you can prove that you love me, then feed my sheep. And whilst I was standing here, the Spirit of God began to minister to me. He says that you love him so dearly because you have made a commitment to feeding his sheep. To feeding his land. Mm. My God. To tell me you love me. It's another layer of love for Jesus that says if you're not feeding the sheep, you don't love me yet. Mm. If you're not feeding the lambs, you don't love me yet. If you love me, feed them. And I've seen how much love you have for God's people. You love not just God, but you love his people. Mm. You love his people. You said something earlier. Uh, sometimes we don't know what we deal with in the closet. In that closet, sometimes you, you question if, mm -mm. if this is truly God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We deal with that all the time. When I came back from Nigeria, I was like, <laughs> God, did you really send me there? <laughs> uh, this, this sending was too long. Uh, I came back and I was tired, exhausted. Have you ever been exhausted? You couldn't pray? I was so exhausted. I believe I talked to you and I kept telling you that I'm tired. I'm, I'm exhausted. I was exhausted. Yeah. So sometimes you question. You question. God, God why well, I me? Mean, I left you and ran away from there. <laughs> I said, just one more week, I'll be right back. But that one week became six, six months. months. My God. And you were not ready for that long trip. Oh, no. You no, know, it was a two weeks. <laughs> it was a two weeks trip that became six months out of. And schedule. then I asked you, I said, "Are you going back soon?" <laughs> That's what it is. Eh? <laughs> Please let me recover. Twenty twenty five. Oh my god! <laughs> Africa, I'll show you. <laughs> Everybody's laughing. <laughs> he said, 
No, we need atmosphere. We need it again <laughs> next year. We're going to do it online. <laughs> And you know what is so amazing? To tell you that God truly sent you there. The moment you did your program, yes, and I did that fellowship, yes, like four days after your program, five days after, they announced that no gathering over fifty people. Yes, your program was the largest program. Yeah. In fact, the weekend after yours, there was no way we would There's have no done program. it. It was just one week after. If that thing but has been a weekend. week after, mm-hmm. that, that program for now. <laughs> so that's how you know it's God that yeah. sent you there. Yeah. But you know you had to still ask questions in the closet. Oh, yes. <laughs> I had to. I asked many questions. A lot of it. <laughs> and it's okay to ask questions. That's right. It's okay to ask questions uh, because if you if you've not gotten to the place where you're asking questions yet, then uh, you have to check what you've been called to do. That's right. You're gonna have to ask. Noah asked. Abraham asked. Everyone asked. It's okay to ask. And so, but when you ask, oh man, God, what, what's what's you will, what's, what's the prayer I was going on earlier? I saw I saw a very big war. And I, it, it, the Spirit of God just brought it back to my remembrance. I saw a very big wall, and, and, and I saw some people going up to the wall, and God breaking down the wall, and they are breaking forth and breaking through. Amen. They are breaking forth and breaking through. They are breaking forth and breaking through because God kept bringing the wall down. But I noticed that when some people went through the wall, they by themselves decided to come back to where they used to be. And I was asking the Lord, why are they keep coming back? Mm. And the Spirit of God says, because they want the result, but they don't want to follow the process hey. to get that result. I don't know who that person is. Yeah, uh, you want to be anointed, but there is a price to pay to for pay. that anointing. That's right. You want to speak, and things happen. Uh, you, you want to be able to pray for someone and they are healed instantly um, it is good to, to desire that but there is a price that you would have to pay to be able to do that and then the spirit of God just brings that to my uh, remembrance now because uh, speaking of closet there are many things that you've had to go through in the closet that's right and uh, some of us want to fly but to fly you got to understand that you have to stay to run you're gonna have to wait to gain momentum and get to your next realm in destiny there are things that you are going to have to do and many of us desire this new level many of us desire this new realm many of us desire this magnificent anointing but uh, there is some stuff that you are going to have to do that's right a lot Many times you may not be even noticed for months, for some people for years. But as with everything, for you to grow, you're going to have to die. Mm. For you to rise, you're going to have to stoop down. It's true. And God lifts you. Don't lift yourself up. Let him do it. Don't get up when he's not asking you to get up. When he says sit down, sit because when it's time you are going to become unstoppable mm. when it's time let hell gather together they, they will you. not be able to stop you that's right and I, I, I know you see the woman of God and you see God use her powerfully and you see God uh, 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 um, I, cause anointing upon her life and you've seen prayers that have been answered you've seen miracles you've seen signs you've seen demons been cast out you've seen all kind of things you've seen an intense power of worship listen uh you've actually also seen at uh, this place we, we've talked about this all the time you've actually seen god's presence showed up in here many times yes there are there, there, there are just a few people just a few people when you go into a room and you gather together you can feel the authentic 
power of God. You can feel the manifest presence of God. It is one person that carries it. Mm. In God, there is no gimmick. In God, there is no fraud. Mm. In God, if you don't pay the price, you will not get it. It's true. Fasting mm. on your own. Fasting with a team of people just to want God to give you something inside. Mm. Just to desire God to anoint you. Just to desire that God bless your people. Bless your people. Show up tonight. Anoint me. It's grace. Mm. And you've paid that price and every single one of us are enjoying the benefit of the presence that's come upon you that is being dispatched in the room and we all benefited but did you know that's what's impact because what you carry as soon as you step into the room the angels pick it up and impacts it into God's people and then you go home you feel this thing doing you that you become unstoppable it's like something is happening to you uh, something is happening to you can't stop it's because once you were here something jumped on you from her mm. and it was a price that she paid okay. so that now to retain yours you're going to have to pay because what she disconnect what connected to you once you were connected disconnects from you because what you were carrying this whole time wasn't yours it came from someone and it's from the room called closet mm. where she was by herself with God God bless you so much Amen. it's it's, 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 it's a magnificent thing and a glorious thing and a beautiful thing to find people I just love God mm. to find people that pursue his presence and bring it and allow people to be a partaker of, of that presence we don't find many of you now mm. thank well, you woman of God amen. thank you so much can we just say we love you to her Pastor Philip, Pastor Philip, I think Pastor Philip is back. <laughs> Every time we go for a program, this is how he, he's always celebrating me. Love you so And much. he's been around a lot of men of God. This man has been, you repented before I even was born. I'm not, <laughs> I know you're going to laugh that. <laughs> I miss your laugh too. <laughs> when, I was, when you first knew me though, when he knew me years ago, I was still a party girl now. <laughs> Sorry, I made it seem like you're so old, right? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is you knew God, Tay Tay. So you've seen, you've seen things. You've been around people. So <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But you know what I mean. He's been around. He has a lot of pastor friends and he they love him even on the keyboard. It's like the 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 in fact this man I think when God creates you God put keyboard for your head. <laughs> he can play keyboard there. I said I said when I was ministering in your program hey, I don't know how they were feeling, but it's like I was feeling so much fire. You know that program, fire. Yeah. Remember after the program, I was shaking, and I came out like, you got me meat pie, like a cold one. Yeah. It's like I was shaking. Something was happening to me. So I felt the same way while I was playing the video. And suddenly I'm like, ah, oh, this guy needs to come play. You see Sabi play the way I like it. <laughs> oh, the six months in Ninja. <laughs> Ninja. <laughs> you don't make you forget. 
<laughs> Why you in Nigeria? I was always praying for you. <laughs> Chai. <laughs> you thought you would finish and run back. You know, another thing that happened in Nigeria, I didn't, I didn't tell you this, but um, I don't know if this is a good spot to say it. Um, I may come to say mm-hmm. I know that God, um, when God sends you to do something, you can't, you can't, uh, uh, you can't say no. Um, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Um, you are a gift to all of us. Wow. A gift. When a gift is given, um, the gift has no ability to say no. If I give you car keys now and the car keys decide to say, I am not going to your hand, that car would know that day because I'm going to slap him. And that would be the end. Because the gift has no ability or should not have the ability to just say no. If it's a gift, it is a gift. And God has given you as a gift to every single one of us. It's given you as a gift. And so um, this is why sometimes God is saying something to you and you, you honestly don't want to do it, but you have to do it. You have to obey we we'll go through that scenario, and like one your, of the like your program. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, program. and it was hard for you to to come, but you, you know, had that time to. was not even a good time to travel to Nigeria. Yes, you had yeah. to because it was your program. Yeah, but but it was a blessing that I was there. It was a blessing, a huge one, and uh, we're still trying to recover everyone. And you know, this was what I was about to say when you left, and and I was staying there. Uh, the Lord impressed in my heart to begin to speak to people. Now, a lot of these things obviously did not make it online, make it to online at all. So, um, we're praying. I was praying all night, and, and, and the Spirit of the Lord said, It's time. I said, Time for what? It's to speak to my people. And um, I, I didn't want to do it. It's to start up something with them. Uh, I, I said, no, please, God, don't do this to me. I'm, I'm not here. I'm not busy here. This is, this is Nigeria. I, I got to go home. And the Lord said, start something. And guess what happened? I decided to, I, the pe- people I was praying with, I said, the Spirit of God is ministering to me on the 14th. I got to begin to work with you guys here. I'm not going to be here. And I'm going to put someone over it so you guys can go on with it. But the Lord is impressing my heart to start it. And guess what I did? on the 14th of that month they had gathered together and they said uh, you said the spirit of God told you to begin a work here and we all have gathered um, and we're waiting for you and I stepped out in the sitting area and I had they had about nine people there and then we had fellowship and seven of them out of the nine gave their life to Christ Now watch this. The next Sunday, those nine people that were there, they brought over 20 something people in the room. So now the room was not filled up because it was just a sitting area. Just by this time, there was lockdown, by the way. So no one was supposed to be moving. No one was having fellowship because there were no services or nothing like that. So by within a month and two weeks within a month and two weeks that number had grown to over 200 people so now 200 people could not fit in the seating area that could take at the most 10 people that was impossible so I started to run uh, three services in that same place to where before I left because this was towards uh, my leaving two months before I left I had invested in getting them their own space. So I paid for one year hotel for them uh, so they can get together and fellowship because these were people that were lost. So you see people coming in that that are, that are t- tied them in bondage. That, you know, Jesus looked at them and he had so much compassion on them. That's what it was. And people were trooping in unstoppable. So uh, I said, God, so you wanted to do this for these people. And 
all of them were delivered set free and I, I actually spoke to them yesterday and they're gathering tonight again because I tap one the pastor over them so they can, they can uh, uh, keep on fellowshipping and worshiping and one of the reasons I know now God had to let me stay in Nigeria was because of that so now because out of that now many many things have been born people are beginning to discover their potential and now people are beginning to walk in that which God has called them to do praise the Lord and, and I'm so, so I'm so excited about that same trip too just that uh, I don't know if I'll go back soon even though it was difficult many good things came out of it many good things still came out and souls are saved yes it was awesome I'm glad I went you know that when I came to your program, I saw this guy that was speaking in tongues, right? Babs. Yes. And I told you to invite him for the program, yes. right? Yes, yes. And I gave him 5,000, right? Yes. This is our fasting that we're doing. This is day six, right? On day one, God, I was talking of a lady that God showed me in my dream, a gospel singer in Nigeria that I don't know. And when I woke up, I looked for her and we started playing her song and somebody called her she came on my video we we'll bless her with money 10,000 so I was talking about how God located her through my dream and then I started remembering your program and how God located a guy through the speaking in tongues yes, Bob's. before you know they got him and he was watching the video so I invited him to come on the video and he, he just wanted to say thank you for that day and I told him okay pray for us and sing for us and guess how much people started blessing him. Wow. We, as of today, I sent him all his money, nine thousand dollars. What? Your friend wow. from your program. Yes. <laughs> you Such even a know the guy that he get blessed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in this fasting we're incredible. doing. Wow. This was just six days ago. Yeah, um, all of them wow. here gave. The guy just came to say thanks from that your because yes, you yes, called yes. him to come for me now, right? Yes. He had no idea. He was shocked. He was even crying. They give him nine grand for pandemic season. <laughs> such a sweetheart, though. He's, he has such a sweet very, spirit. Uh, very anointed. Yes. His very tongues anointed. were like. Yeah. How many of you enjoyed his tongue speaking? You guys look at them now. <laughs> they were, <laughs> It's through Pastor Philip I met him. So that's why I'm saying that that program, yeah. you know, like if I hadn't come there, I wouldn't know that. I don't know him before. And he said he almost did not show up because, you know, it was last minute that we planned yes. that thing. Yes. But because you invited him, he trusts you that he doesn't just go anywhere. And Pastor Philip has a good reputation with them in Nigeria. They respect him. So that's why he came. So it's all because of that program. And now my whole members like him wow. they were even following him and subscribing to him on YouTube. YouTube so one meeting can birth many things change this it is so if I didn't come or you didn't do it none of this will happen this, yes. or if he didn't show up that day so we were all somehow led by the spirit of God and all connected yeah and we don't know what more will still come from it this is what we know for now. And now you just told us what you started. Yeah. Even in the season of a pandemic, yeah. you didn't just be idle. No. You were still working. Yeah. Still at work. Somebody clap for Pastor Philip. I'm so proud of you because I know I'm always pushing you. I'm always pushing you to, to do more. Hard work. Do more. Once I saw you do a live video, and I think it was in a big church. You were laying hands on people. People were falling. I said, child, see anointing power. But at some point, you looked tired. Because there were a lot of people. I said, ah. <laughs> this guy goes, hey, when this program will end? <laughs> As a feeling, people don't know how hard this work is. So. It is hard. Like is people hard. are falling. You are saying, come out. And, yeah. and maybe you are fasting yeah. too. I was. All right. <laughs> you can imagine. I was. And then it's 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 this work, it's sacrifice. It's like you have to man, it's a this lot. This is why I really appreciate you. So when I say thank you, it's not from my head. You know, there's a difference between when you tell someone thank you and don't know the value of what you're thanking them for. 
than when you actually know the work that that thing you're thank, thanking them for entails. I know what it means to stand before people and God decides to honor you to come. Mm. Because standing before people doesn't, doesn't mean God will come. Mm. It's true. It doesn't mean God will come. God can be also in a room and refuse to touch people. Wow. But God sometimes will touch people because of one person. He will say, I don't want to do it, but because of you, I will do it. I know what that means. Grace. There are some people that God follows sometimes. There are some people that carry God with them. Mm. Wow. Anywhere they go, they carry God with them. And so, when I say thank you, I know what it is. Because you can be exhausted. You can be tired. Um, it's, it's hard enough just to love somebody that, that, that don't love you back. Mm. But then when you love God's people and you decide to pour into them, not just spiritually, but mentally. Um, I don't know why you do this, but this has got to be God. Do you know that to preach a message sometimes to preach a 10 minutes message may take you 3 hours to prepare mm. sometimes it's going to take you 3 days to prepare sometimes 1 hour message can take you 3 weeks 1 month to prepare but you're in a fast I don't know how many of you know that you're in a fast and you're preaching you said 8 hours earlier 16 hours 16 hours yeah oh my goodness no food. <laughs> if I give some folks the mic, you'll be so shocked that in 10 minutes you run out of words. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to try it? In 10 minutes, Who all wants you to have try? to Raise say up your hand. in life, on all you have to say in life is gone. It's finished. <laughs> Pastor, Pastor it's you finished. say who wants to try? Nobody raise hand. No. <laughs> <laughs> but for 16 hours, 16 hours, 16 in a day, not, not, not in the week, not in the month. In a day. My God. You're pouring, you're pouring, you're pouring. It has to be God. Ah. Monday, you told me now, you say coming online even for 30 minutes, if it's not it's, it's, it's work. <laughs> and you say you don't do it before, so you know. It's work. It's not easy. So, it's, it's, it's easy when, it's better when people that have done it talk about it because they've been there. Oh, they are still there, so they know. But those that are talking ignorantly, they've not even tried it. You know, um, even to be anointed consistently and grow in the anointed is difficult. Wow. Because sometimes people that have arrived feel, they, feel that they have arrived. Mm. So when you lay hands on someone and they fall, you feel like you have arrived. Ah, when you say, wow. come out in Jesus' name and demon fly out, you feel like you have arrived. It's over. So what's the point of praying? There's no need. I got it already. Why should I still fast? It's true. I don't have need to fast. Demon listen to me when I talk to them. Mm. I mean, the men have seen it. Everyone have seen demons cry out. So I don't have need to fast. But to still bend your knees and say, God, <laughs> Like this one, we're doing a seven days fast. Seven day fast. Seven days. After all the signs and wonders and miracles. We're still working. And still fasting. It's got to be God. And 24 hours program. It's got to be God. Whenever you talk, it makes me really think. And you're right. It's God. It has to be God. Like when I came here today, I didn't know what would happen. We started with praise, worship, and then I just, it's like... At some point, it's like I saw heaven open. I saw angels. I was hearing hallelujah. And then it's like, it's like something. I need to go back and watch it. But something just happened. And I didn't plan. You know, sometimes you would think it's in the middle. But with this, my program, we've been to so many together. We don't know. Sometimes it's when me and you are doing testing microphone. Yeah. We have many times we've done so testing many microphone. Them. So many of them. And, and then testing tons to like Holy Ghost encounter. Yeah. So that's why we always tell them to have the cameras ready. I think in Chicago there was one. 
it can can't, happen, it can't We're trying yes. to test the mic. The program hasn't started. And then, my God. Explosion. And that's what he's saying when you consistently do this. And the atmosphere can... It has to be someone that is staying in the presence of God. Constantly. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. I walked in this place and I was shivering. Wow. Then you I, came when we were what? I didn't even know when you came. My you, eyes your eyes were closed. closed, yeah. Oh, wow. When my eyes closed, I don't know what happened again. What happened after that? I, I, I don't know. It's like I was here, but I wasn't here. It's like, and then at some point I was, it's like something was, man, I need to watch. I can't wait to watch it. But I was hearing some screams and like people were. Yes. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you for what you And even as you're talking now, my leg is vibrating. I feel like a strong presence of God. So you you said you don't carry anointing, come on. (laughs) From (laughs) Nigeria. I'm so happy you could make it. I'm so I'm so happy. This man traveled with me during the world tour when I was being persecuted. And a lot of his friends are like, why are you following that woman? Don't you see her videos all over? They're calling her name. And you always normally ask them, have you been in the same room with her? Yes. I always tell them online, have you listened to her before? I think, I think there's a difference when they walk into the room, right? They will be able to. It's different. But what if the, they don't, they can't tell the presence of God? Because some of these people, maybe they don't really know. You know, um, many of us have been in religion so long that now God intentionally has deafened the ears and seized the mouth Mm. of so many people because they've converted an experience into a tradition. So now they're not able to have new encounters because the last experience and encounter they had was the last time God stopped working with them. <laughs> and, and I'm serious. And only God knows when, what year that was. <laughs> and we have to be careful not to be too familiar with the presence of God. That's true. This is where the problem is. When you become too familiar, you become God to yourself. Hey. And this is the problem. So that when God is beginning to do a new thing, that it, many of us don't see it. God has actually moved and he started something completely new. And those of us that have been stuck to tradition, we can't see the mm. new things that God is doing. So now they stand in a position to criticize the one God has anointed. Because that was the last experience. And, and, and when God walks with you, the spirit of God will not strive with you. When you feel like you, you know too much, it's going to leave you. Yeah, when God leaves, and sometimes you, you won't there. know. You know, you're the one I always say, God will leave and you will not know that he has left. I, I like you that your message when you always say, God, is God the fire only you one. or something. And I said, God working. is the only one that would employ you and fire you and you wouldn't know he has fired you. <laughs> I and like you're still way. working. I like that message. Yeah. He has moved on, <laughs> but you're still working for him, but you don't know. <laughs> Ask Saul. He has replaced Saul with David. And David, no, no. But and Saul, Saul no, no. did not know that he's been replaced. Child. And he was still king. But God said, I've rejected him. I don't know him. This is a man after my own heart. Somewhere in the wilderness. So while the person is still there talking, they don't know God has found a replacement. My God, this is dangerous. <sighs> Really something. Yes. Yeah. I'm wondering how many of us are still working, but God has replaced us. Hey, Father. That's why we have to always obey Him. Disobedience causes replacement. Yes. This is why I lo- <laughs> this is why I love you. So much. <laughs> I know See, you want to write something down. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor Philip always want to write something down. This is why, because there are three things with this ministry that I but I love and cherish and hold so dearly. Number one is repentance. Consistent repentance comes from a realm of knowing that you are vulnerable to the Holy Spirit. God, have I missed it? Help me. Help me. Help me. And you keep calling the people in. You keep
keep calling the people in. You keep calling the people in. I came in here shivering. Mm. Consistent repentance comes from a realm of honesty. It's true. Don't try to be, don't try to be a big boy to God. Mm-mm. It doesn't work. Come before him open, honest, vulnerable. The second thing that I've seen here is the presence of God that is always available by reason of consistent pursuit of the spirit of the living God. You always talked about the spirit of God. You talk about the Holy Spirit all the time. You talk yes. about the Holy Spirit all the time. Yes. You talk about it. Now, if you, I don't mean to put certain folks down, but if you go to certain places, um, now, the only person that I know that is on the face of this planet now, the most important person in the face of this planet Earth now is the Holy Spirit. Is the most important person on the face of the planet, yet is the less talked about and the most ignored mm. in the church. Mm. And so the church of the living God is powerless because the person that's supposed to push in the power, the They've not engaged them. Like Catherine, they, Catherine Kuhlman they, always talks they've about. They've disconnected the from him. How can we possibly do this thing without him? We can't. And this is what you carry. Because that's the power of God. That's the power of God. Mm-hmm. That is it. But when they even see someone that is working like the Holy Spirit is working through them, they call it a demon because they don't even know the Holy Spirit. But you said it earlier. Some people call Jesus that he was operating with the spirit of Bezebub mm-hmm. because they he, didn't understand the power. Us. And so, um, <laughs> I like how Jesus puts it. The Pharisees came in the room and Jesus knew that he came in uh, prepared that they already know and Jesus began to explain to them he said uh, to the disciples he said because they came in acting that way their eyes have been blind and their ears have been deafened so they cannot hear anymore and they cannot see anymore just because you came in with a heart to act like you already know it and so you're not able to receive so when you stand in a position being led of the spirit of God to speak things even into the lives of people and to operate in the realm of the spirit, the natural Adamic nature man, the first thing they do is to criticize you. And that's what we've seen over, over the months and over the years. Um, and the thing that comes to my mind when, when some of my friends come to me and, and, they, and they point fingers, I said, have you ever been in the room when she is speaking mm. and none of them can answer that question I said when you get in the room come let's talk all I need you to do is just be in the room just I remember after your program you called me saying a lot of your friends watch yes and they were amazed oh yes a lot of them so that's Atlanta. the only time they got to watch because it was your program yes <laughs> <laughs> and these are folks that are in in high places, some of them. Ministry. In ministry, they've been in ministry for decades. Some 30 years, some 40 years, some over 20 years. And um, for the first time, they were shocked. And the only thing majority of them could say is that this woman is anointed. Wow. This woman is anointed. Some of them, some things were happening in their rooms where they are. Wow. Where, this was happening in Nigeria. They were watching from different parts of the country. Things were happening to them in their room. Some of them had to confess they told to you. me to tell me later. Are you serious? I didn't tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> they had to call me, tell me later. Wow. Because you see, when the anointing shows up to where you are, you lose control. It's true. When, when true anointing comes in, oh, no, no, no. You can't control it. Then, no, no, no. I remember, I remember the program that we went to. I think it was in Jamaica. I'm not sure. But it was somewhere in the Caribbean. When uh, two lesbians came in. 
Jamaica. That was Jamaica. That they came for the light to to work on a light to give us light, and the thing hit them. Yes, they were the ones that owned the light. They came to. And they were in the, the back. Light. They didn't want. They were not part of the program. They were not part of the program. <laughs> they just came. I think we were getting close to the end of the program or something. So, well, they came to adjust the light of some yeah. sort. Listen, <laughs> they were not part of the program. They just came and they stood at the back. They were not nowhere near the front. They, All the way at the back. They were resting at the wall at the back. At the wall at the back. Listen, when the anointing showed up, something happened to these two women. Mm -hmm. Something happened to them. It's one, not one of them started speaking in tongues. One of them for the first time, and one of them was throwing up a lot. Deliverance. They were not born again before they started speaking in tongues. <laughs> Have you seen that kind of anointing that hits you? You've not had the opportunity to say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me on my sake. And then you break into tongues. Oh my God. It's not about proximity. It's about connectivity. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not how close you are. You can be all the way in Jaquachan. God, when God decides to fish you out, you can't stop it. In their room, while she was speaking, even Bob told me. Wow. Bob says, now I know why she is the way she is. Wow. Bob. He said, now I understand. Because as soon as you pick that thing, the atmosphere whew, changed. Something shifted mm. in the room. My God. And Bob is anointed. So for him to say that. Yeah. When an anointed person gives an, an, another person compliment like that, they know. They've, they've seen. There's, there's a lot of people that are anointed in Nigeria. Even the gospel singers you brought. Even that yeah. girl. That little girl. Yes. Like, it's, it's just that, you yeah. know, Nigeria, sometimes they can't really do much. But some people there love God. They do. Hope. But wait, let me tell you something. While you were there, things were happening here. <laughs> While you were in the lockdown, <laughs> doing your thing, I got my book out, Vindication. Yes, I, I know I showed you, right? Yes, you showed me. And then that, I have a room, that room where you always stay to eat when we are fasting, you're eating in that yes. room. <laughs> you can't do that anymore. <laughs> What's happening in the room now? <laughs> it is a worship room now. <laughs> if you see that room, you will shout, Mommy, is this set up? The room is set up. If you enter that room, <laughs> eh? I think you should go and come and see them. I <laughs> let him just see. I'll wait for you. Go and see. I, when you talk, we can hear you from here. Okay. So while you were there, <laughs> to tell you how God they walk, within a few months, hey, sharp, hey, sharp. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey! Jesus. <laughs> How did you change this? <laughs> this is like that room in Nigeria that you had that program. That I like so much. That's oh right. my God. That's right. I can't wait for you to play the keyboard. There. It's another worship room. Oh. <laughs> I know it's the room you would like, the kind you would like. That's why. You designed this. You were just here a few months ago, right? But you see how God works. You're this always worship, on the move. Worship room. You're always doing things. Always. Wow. Always. Even in the pandemic season. It's not affecting you. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but if you come now. <laughs> eh? He got lost in his presence. <laughs> They're laughing at you here. <laughs> Once you enter that room. Man, it's just a different atmosphere. Wow. This is lovely. <laughs> I know that. When, when I was getting it, what did I tell you guys? I said, Pastor Philip, go like this room. Oh, I love it. This is during that time. Wow. This whole, what I'm trying to say is when God is with wow. you, even in a pandemic season, you are still moving. It prospers you. Yeah. Wow. My first book don't come out. Vindication. God spoke through my mouth for over two hours or three hours telling my story. 
And then he showed me in a dream to turn into a book. We, we, thousands of copies have gone out all over the world. And that room wow. and some other things that had happened. So it's not like I was just sitting down doing nothing. And there's no way you can be sitting down doing nothing when you're working for God or God is with you. There's always something. There's always something. Every day we don't even know tomorrow that could be an assignment. Because we are actively seeking God, spending time in his presence. But like Pastor Philip said, if you touch one person and you say it's over, no more fasting, no more praying, no more revelation, no more dreams, no more visions, no more assignments. So that one you did is always what you'll be referring to. Like we're talking things that will happen today. You are talking things that happened five years ago. You know how they always refer to old miracles now? Yes. Yeah, when I was in Kotonou. I raised, <laughs> I raised somebody from the dead. People are like, okay, what is going to happen yet? <laughs> they are still... <laughs> Pastor Philip, you've heard some people like that. Oh, yes. Like they're always referring to things when they used to be so skinny in 2000, when their church used to be full. Bros, what did they happen now? Do something now. So with us, there's always something that if you don't be around us for a few months, you feel like so much have passed you. Like, look at you entering that room. How do you feel? It's like a whole new place. You ate it's, there. I've been there. So many you were times. there like yeah. February or... Uh, yeah, you were. You ate fufu there. February. In that room, yeah. I eat there. When we're fasting, him is doing his own fast. Pastor Philip fasts is here. Because he will say, you say I'm skinny like this. <laughs> Don't keep me. <laughs> Pastor Philip breaks his fast at 3 o'clock. So, so while we were here, it's warming food there. That was his room. So now where are you going to be warming your food? <laughs> I knew you would be shocked when you see it. But I knew you would like it. I love it. Wow. Atmosphere. Wow. You know you like atmosphere. It's got to be right. That you... you need to do atmosphere <laughs> in here in America. Wow. Not just Nigeria. Do it here. In Nigeria, we watch the one here. You did a good job. It wasn't Thank easy. You. Even the videos and everything. Although I was complaining as how it's high, because yeah. you all did not get AC or fan. And then the drummer was behind me. And then you made me sit for a long time before I prayed. You know, I, I don't forgive you, but I, I kind of complained, but it was good. <laughs> it was good. I was so proud of you because in Nigeria, you have to be living there to have a program and people will show up. You've been away from the country for years. And it's by the grace of God that you can go to a country where you haven't been to in a while and do a program and people will show up. People from different parts of Nigeria and have a choir of over 100 people. It's just amazing. If you haven't done these things you look, it's easy to criticize. Ah, I know. But, but, but. but when God gives you an assignment, <laughs> look at Yeti now. Yeti. <laughs> when I say assignment, she put her head down. You guys saw the video <laughs> two days ago. She said she took one more than two weeks <laughs> to plan to just go feed the homeless. <laughs> when she said that on the video, I said, what? Almost two months for just to go do... She, she did it in Baltimore. She's in Baltimore. Yeah, that's where she did it. She was going around looking for homeless people. But it took her a month to put it together. But you two, you all took you almost one year, old, bros. <laughs> to plan it. <laughs> Pastor Philip always, they do miss you. <laughs> He's always meeting with people. That thing took you a long time. People don't know what you put into that thing. Because over here, you are always making calls. You are having meetings with people. Because you live here and you're planning something there. You have to have the right people. Yes, yes. You know, it's a lot of work. Sorry, because I see one year. I know, it's an inside joke, isn't it, love? Because <laughs> me, I don't really take long to plan stuff. He knows. I, like, I could just decide. I wake up now. I tell you, I'm going to country in five, years, five days. I'll go, people show up. And that's grace. It's not that I'm better or anything. You know what I mean? Like, it's just grace. Because 
Most times we're on the go. Like war tour, we were in many countries. Yeah. Like every week. Like we were just on the back go. Back. He was in Jamaica with me when that lady, the angel, gave me money. 20, 20, 20. Yeah. You saw that woman. Oh, yes. And God later told me that's an angel. He was right there. But she said, oh, how? Oh, God, don't tell me it's an angel. And bless, I never tell you. I never tell, never tell you. I told you. I, I think you've, you've said it. Because you, you know you're always busy. Yeah. So we saw angel. We didn't know. And you know, I just told you that God said 2020 is when my ministry will officially Sorry. start. Yeah. Before you know, this woman come. Yes. And she gave $20, 20, 20 euros, 20. And you know, when we turned back, we didn't see her again. Mm-hmm. And she never came to meet us where we were waiting in line. Yes. And then when she opened her purse trying to get um, something, well, yeah, phone, it looked like junk just in the purse. Just like purse trash. Purse. It didn't look like. He was there. He saw it. He was, and then when you were giving her the flyer information for the program, something told me she won't come. And she said, oh, I have to be in a country. like Yes, in London or somewhere yeah. or something. Yeah. She said she lives in London. She said she has to go to Gambia or something. Yes, yes I remember. And you were there now. Yes. So what I'm telling them is good. We just finished Jamaica. We no sleep. Remember? Yeah, we didn't sleep. We just headed to the airport. We were always on the road. Yeah. We didn't sleep. And you know, all that time I was in Jamaica sitting down doing deliverance, I didn't know if I told you. I would, things were just crawling through my body. Oh. No, you didn't tell me that. Ah, I didn't do deliverance. You think people think it is to do deliverance? It's not. They were, you know, Jamaica is not easy. <laughs> You're laughing. Jamaica is not easy. I had some crawling objects and I'm kicking out demons from people and things are crawling on me. I just remembered. This is just to say how powerful it is. What you do is, and how powerful God is anointed you. Uh, I have a friend that started to do deliverance. Just one person that he cast that demon from. All the demons came at night to press him. <laughs> the guy said, Bros, this is the end. I'm not going this lane again. That was it. That was the end. I was there expecting this. <laughs> I said before I die. <laughs> before just my one, time. One deliverance. No, just one. Not two. I said before they kill me, kill my family. It's like <laughs> as soon as you open the door to deal with one demon, the devil will come and start attacking every yeah. member of your family. They don't know. If they can't reach you and then they'll get to you eventually. Everybody wow. just started falling sick. Himself he went to bed, he saw demon pressing him. <laughs> Bros, no, 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 no. So the guy don't they do deliverance again? Let me just f- follow my teaching. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell the people Jesus loves them. <laughs> <laughs> this is too funny, but the believe me, Lord, I don't. That's it. No, so many people want to go to heaven. I just tell them, God loves. So if somebody demon manifested in front of him, he know he go do. Oh uh, no, no, no. It's you know because these things are not only. Um, they are not only dangerous. If you've not been given powers to do this thing, and, and the truth is that we all have been given the power, but again, and this is the difference between you and, and a lot of people, is that you keep constantly paying the price for it. You got to go into your closet. Otherwise, that demon will mess you up. Hmm. I've seen demons literally slap somebody. <laughs> In real time, real life, not fake life. The demon got upset through the woman and the person through the woman that was uh, that was uh, being that was possessed with the demon went to the person that was trying to cast them out and Jesus. gave them a serious odd slap. That person could not recover. It's not recovered till now. It was not the woman that slapped him. It was the demon that slapped him. Till today, as I'm talking to you, that human being has not recovered. So, uh, uh, God has given us the power to be able to cast out devils, and you can do it. But don't do it living a life of sin. Don't do it when you've not paid the adequate price. It's supposed to be the children's bread. Every child of God is supposed to say, "Hey, come out in Jesus' name," and keep it moving. But because we compromise a lot. But because we compromise and we're not willing to keep paying the price. Remember Jesus said, this kind, this particular demon cannot come out unless, not by prayer, no matter how much you pray, that particular demon will not come out. Because the disciples, they were prayed up. 
Remember these disciples, they were hanging out with Jesus. Yeah. They tried to cast out this demon until Jesus. Remember where it was coming from? From the mountain. And Jesus said to them, this particular demon can't come out unless by prayer. Because when Jesus looked at them and said, what happened to you guys? You guys couldn't cast. When the father of the child spoke to Jesus, the first thing Jesus said was that he rebuked the disciples first. He said, you should be able to do this. Yeah. He rebuked them. So they were so ashamed, embarrassed. On the next day when they were eating, they were able to summon courage and say, bros, yesterday, what that thing? Fasting and prayer. Jesus said, this particular one is death. The only thing that opens is deafness. is fasting. Fasting. Some of us don't want to fast and you want to go cast that demon. Try. It's not going to There's one it video that is trending on social media. One skinny girl, one pastor was trying to deliver her. She delivered him. <laughs> <laughs> she, she beat her me around from church. <laughs> and the funny thing is, with deliverance, the person could be really skinny. Look powerless. Huh. And you would just underestimate that you won't even need Osha. No, don't worry, I got this. When that thing comes over them, yeah. Pastor Philip said the person never recover now. Till today. If they even slap your face, you go to go look left, to the left, <laughs> for a long time. Because it's not them that hit you, like he said. It's the demon, the demon yeah. that hits you. You know? Yeah. Not to put fear in people, but honestly speaking, a demon can cast out a demon. It's true. So if you have demon in you, first you need to be free first. Yes. You need to have the Holy Spirit to be able to pin it down. And sometimes people think, oh, they can live in sin and do these things. No. These demons know what you've done. There was one person that was, it wasn't my cousin. Or somebody was telling me, they were trying to do deliverance. My cousin was telling me, or somebody was telling me, the demons say, you that just left the hotel yesterday, room one knows something. You want to come out? Demon was prophesying. Like, demon, they exposed this person. Real time prophecy. They, they see things now. Say you, my friend, go away. Like they, they know they will expose you. Yes. Yeah, they true. know these things. It's true. Yeah. What are those? Is it not the seven um seven sons of what? Skiver. Skiver. Yes. They beat them, naked them, they yeah. run. <laughs> Everything Bible is complete. complete. All these things are there. We have to be careful before we approach cases. We check ourselves first to be sure. Yeah. And even sometimes, even as holy as we may seem or be, there are some cases that God will not allow us to deal with at that moment. Yeah. There's some people that God doesn't want you to pray for them right now. Don't try to show power or if the Holy Spirit is not leading you, the one that is the power of God is not leading you. If you go ahead, <laughs> you'll be disgraced. Because maybe God is doing something with that one. Or God has set that one for a set time. Yeah. You understand? Like there were people that Jesus healed that they were set for his time. They were waiting for him. So nobody could have delivered them. You know what I mean? It's true, yeah. I'm preaching. But it's the truth. Some people are set for... God is still doing something. Still preparing it. That it will come out in a bigger way to give him glory. So that day... There are some people you pray for that first day. Nothing will happen. They have faith. You got power. But that date for deliverance is not that date. Because God wants it... Like the man with the legions... It was, that was a date for deliverance. And it didn't end there. God made sure those herdsmen lost their business, their big business. And God hired them to be his evangelists, to go tell people about it. Yeah. And the whole town was aware of it. So even though at first there was nobody there, but after the deliverance, it, it was heard of. Yes. Because people were jobless. Those men, the animals were dead, right? It was a set date and a set time. And God had already prepared the atmosphere for it. And that's why it was done that day. So it's not because sometimes you are not anointed. You are, but you still need to work with God. Pastor Philip, I don't know, I'm feeling chills, but you still need to hear the voice of God and obey him. Like I could be here now. And somebody may be saying, oh, I want to go pray for me. 
and God is wanting me to preach at this time I can't pray for you I may come across as rude or this woman is arrogant but the spirit of God says preach now so if I still disobey him and say come let me pray for you you will still have the problem high as you will call Fion Bob but the thing is still there but when the time comes God himself will locate you you may just be listening to the message and boom I will say hey you come you see if you read the Bible there were times like that there was a crippled guy in the book of Acts that was just paying attention as the apostle Paul was preaching he was just listening to the message and Paul saw that he had faith to be healed and that's how the man did not say please I need deliverance God made him see the man and he healed him even the lady that was bent over that Jesus healed she was just there in the midst of the congregation bent over this is how she is she was there sitting like this she was located you see what I'm saying so sometimes the timing has to be right and the person too the person because some people all they want that's why God Pastor Philip you don't know what happened this place we were supposed to have almost 70 70 to 80 people or something but my spirit was wanting this place to be enough for just the people in the room I didn't want overflow there and the other room and I didn't know God put it in my heart like that but for some reason I didn't want that much people two days ago God made an announcement I was just talking to Prophet Shema before then I said I don't know I've been thinking that I need lesser number of people I said but I don't know what we're going to do because people had to call to make reservations and it would be bad for you to call them and say don't come who are you going to call God had a perfect plan two days ago God said anyone that did not start the fasting with us that didn't do it right because the first three days we did not eat the fourth day we ate and today is day and then the, five, the fifth day we didn't eat today is day six we're not eating we'll break on day seven man of God the least drop <laughs> the least drop <laughs> the least drop there were some there was somebody that said she fasted and then she didn't know why she lied she repented because she broke right and she had to God used this thing to teach us many things and we were just watching the numbers drop it like it was just dropping and we became this people here and this is exactly what I wanted because I didn't want even children I wanted them in this room so that whatever will happen let them not be watching it on a screen you know what I mean let it not be I wanted them to feel it here you see what I'm saying and God did that that feeling that I felt like I needed less sometimes we think it's us but it's God just like when you feel like you need to quit a job you've been feeling it when you see the job you're getting like irritated you're thinking oh maybe you're lazy no it is God saying time is up God is a spirit how else can he communicate with us do you see what I'm saying if you don't feel like people invited you somewhere but lately it's like I don't know if I want to go no? you've been God is saying you don't want to go brought it down to this number of people I was even surprised that it was still full because I, I had to go through the list again because you know this place is not so big and no one will want to travel from afar only to go sit in that room or sit in the, the conference room they want to be here but I didn't do it myself God did it so you have to let God lead and work with God Otherwise, you will offend people trying to figure it out your own way. This way, nobody was offended. People were glad to stay back because they know we had to obey God. Even children, if you didn't fast, you couldn't come. This is serious. 
But it also showed us that not everybody that said they did something did it. Or not everyone is doing something even though they are watching, commenting. You see what I'm saying? Because everybody has a battle to fight. We all have our own battle. It's not saying that you are bad though. Come on now. The first day of this fast, eh? My own attack was, I even shared it with them. They would say, go job, go and eat. Bro, hunger. It's like everything was just going wrong. I went into my closet. God said I should sleep in the closet. The first day, the, the ninth of day one. The closet is so small. And you can't even pull your leg. And it was cold. I, I slipped on the floor. Because I was like, ah, God is about to give me a powerful encounter. Pastor, I slept there. I remember one or two encounters, but I know I had like seven. Only woke up remembering one or two. I vex. And then my whole body was hurting from sleeping on the ground like the floor. I was so angry. I said, Lord, let me remember this. It wasn't coming. You know how sometimes you want to remember a dream? The more you try, the more the dream, they disappear. You know? I said, so what was the point sleeping in the closet? You know? And then when I, I was just cranky and then I went on my bed and my mom had changed my sheet. Somebody clap for my mom. They can never have it. She changed my sheet, but the cover of the sheet, you know when you wash sheets and that little round, round thing, they attach the tin to them. What they call it? Lint or lint? That thing was on. When I covered it, it didn't think it was scratch me. The lint, they wound me. I said, what is this? Everything is not working. I can't remember doing it. They will say, just go and eat. Stop wasting your time. <laughs> you know when you're so moody and you're thinking food will just solve it. Wait, does anyone feel like that? Because you're like, what? <laughs> As I feel it, you say, oh yeah. So you know this thing. It's like, eat now. You can do six to six. Do you know how many fasting you've been doing since you started? It was calculating fast for me. After all, you are anointed. These people need it. I knew. I knew that there's something about this fast. Pastor, if not for self-control, then I would have eaten. If I had eaten and God had made such a rule, it would have fit me too. I don't know if you guys understand. And for some reason, God made me share the encounter. I couldn't sleep and then when I finally managed to sleep and woke up, I was still moody. So I now entered the closet I knelt down and I started to repent. I said, Father, I'm so sorry. And I do this all the time. You've been around me before. You know how I am. There was one time, I think me and you were somewhere and I was reading Galatians 5.20 something, the fruits of the spirit. Remember? I do that a lot. So I was repenting. I said, I'm so sorry, Father, for blaming you for not remembering my dream. I'm sorry, please restore me. I knew something was messing with my mind. You can be so anointed and still have these moments. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Please don't think that, oh, we are beyond it. When our own attack comes, it comes strong. Yes. It's like the whole hell, hell and all the demons hey. came for you. Because when they start with you, then they are going to the rest of your followers. You know how you strike the shepherd? And then you scatter the sheep. I knew I had to repent, and immediately God just came over me, renewed my mind. And then I had a bad headache when I woke up from sleep. You know, when you fast, you have this headache. So this headache, eat. I, I even messaged my mom. I said, Mommy, this cover is scratching me. She said, Can you manage it till tomorrow? I said, No, it's bad. My mother does off sleep. She's right then. <laughs> I thought she was going to come help me. She slept off. I said, how bad can the day be? Now, I could have gone to change it myself. But you know, when you don't, they spoil small. <laughs> My mom has spoiled me so much. So I was just angry at everyone in the house. Even my son that was sleeping. How they vex for everybody. <laughs> some of you, some of you, I'm just saying this. So you know, we all can have these moments. Very true. No. Because it's good to say these things. If not, when you're having it, it will make you feel like you're the worst person. 
But no, even anointed people have these moments. But we have to come back quick. Before we do something we'll regret. Even just like when you're angry, you gotta snap out of it quick. Otherwise, before you know you're breaking things, you're shooting somebody. You know, be angry and sin that, right? And I cried and I was, and I could feel in my closet. I could just feel. I said, Father, I was just talking to God. I said, even this headache, I know you will heal me. It's okay. Like I was just, I said, there are many people out there looking to be used by you and you chose me. I'm sorry for ever complaining. I love you so much. And then I came online and God made me tell them these things. Because sometimes when we're telling this story, they think this woman is just... But God is using it to help somebody that will break the fast. So when they want to break it, they remember a woman of God was, <laughs> was tempted. And, but a lot of people still failed. So I knew, because whenever you are fasting and the temptation is strong like this, something good will come out of that fast. So I passed my test. Even God himself, I know you. So when God now said that those that did not do the three days dry, oh, I knew that a lot of them went through a lot. I knew that I, I wasn't blaming any of them because I put them through the worst fast. Pastor Philip, was it two months ago in November? November. We did the seven days, no water, no food, um, no food. So we do seven days straight, no food. You know, we don't do that thing before. One of the programs I did there. We did it again. Your friend nearly died. If I don't, I don't die. Huh. This one was not too, it wasn't so far ago. Funny thing is, not even up to two months when we did that. And we're already on another seven days. I don't know why God puts us through this. But God says that he's, he's, he's getting people ready for greatness. It's like, it's, and I believe him because look at me now like he knew me before I was saved it's like he says he's, Pastor Philip last week God made my son fast for three days no food this boy 12 year old and guess what I saw it in a dream God kept bringing it that I had to do it with him he did not eat for the first time in his life three days no water no food. And guess what? God made me do a video for people to see him. I, I even told him you can break on the third day at 12. He said, no, I want to stay till 6 p.m. This small boy. And God said he's using him as a public example to even strengthen people for the seven days coming. And then I even asked my son here in the studio. I said, so Michael, are you going to do the seven days? He said, no. Everybody was laughing. But you know what God did to this boy? Two days after the fast, he appeared in his dream saying, show me the seven days. This small boy, tomorrow they will see the boy great. They will not know that at 12 years old, <laughs> he started doing dry right. fasting, no food, no water. He told me, he said, mommy, I'm going to do the fast with you guys, but I will do six to six. That's what he was doing. I said, are you sure? Because the boy has not recovered. The boy don't follow. That time you see my now. Fasting stretch him. No, 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 no. I'm saying this so we know. Why would God do that to a kid? He just completed his assignment. Why would he come? I've, asked, I've been asking God. I told my mom. Mommy, I told you. I said, I'm asking God, Father. Why would you want him to join again? If he hadn't joined the fast, because God already knew how he would eliminate people on the list, this boy could not have been in this room today. Because it's not going to be favor. I won't favor my son wow. and say, oh, my son didn't fast. Let him come. He prepared him because he wanted him in the room. Are you guys thinking? If Michael didn't fast, my brother is home. He will stay home with him. I don't play like that. I don't do family. My parents know me. He said, a man came into the room and said, you should join the fast. He's been fasting. The boy just finished three days, no food, no water. And this one started four or five days after his own. He joined us. Why? 
I didn't tell him it's supernatural. God himself told him. And then you see grown-ups. They want the anointing. They want all of that. But they can't do these things. And God is picking children. God said it today now. Say if adults don't are not ready, God can even raise stones to worship him. So people need to sit up. Otherwise, God will skip you and go to the kids. You will see children doing mighty things. Because the adults are not ready. That's him. And he's here. God wants him to be in the program. Prophet Shema will be coming later. He came to Houston for a program, so he will stop by. And I told him I want him to sit near the prophet. So, Because God said he will make him a major prophet. When God spoke through my mouth, God spoke about him. That he will be a major prophet. So I said I need the prophet anointing to rub off on him. That's why. You see how he's obedient there? When we were giving Bob's money on day one, the gospel singer. Because he's part of the fast, right? He was telling me how much we've even raised. Because he was watching from YouTube on his phone. He's not just fasting, he's part, he's reading. I will even call him soon. He read the script the scriptures. Because it's one thing to say you're fasting, but all you're doing is sleeping in the house, looking at time for, for you to eat. Fasting, you need to spend time with God. Yeah. Some people are doing diet and they call it fast. Yeah. Weight loss diet, starving. This boy, after the video, I said, so are you going to give him an offering? He said, yeah, I'll give him $10. As he entered his room, because he has money, he came back with 50. I said, Michael, why 50? He said, a voice told me to make it 50. Wow. He said, a voice. Like he intended to give 10. He said, a voice. And you know these children, they keep maintaining what they say. Like, we adults, sometimes we may lie. But they know Sabi lie. He said, a voice. Meaning, it's that, you don't hear God's voice. God, you know, is using him to teach a lesson. If the woman of God, as busy as she is, her son, her only son, God will not spare him. God will make him do this. So the fasting is not punishment to you. It's helping you. It's for your own good. Mine is even harder, but I love it. God has trained me. Pastor Philip, you know I like food. You know, but see how I'm always doing fasting. When I was coming to your program, I fasted three days dry, no food, no water. I broke it in the plane on my way to Nigeria. You know I didn't like the hotel food. And I didn't eat. You had to find me meat pie when I finished ministry. I was shaking. I was hungry. They had clothes. The people serving food had clothes. I don't even know where he got the meat pie from. It was so cold. You are there now. So when they see us holding the mic doing these things it costs everything everything that's why God fights for us everything like Moses God fought for him because first he didn't even want to go and secondly it cost him everything have you read about the Israelites they were always complaining those people when I get angry when I read about them complain, complain, complain despite everything God had done oh, yes. there was one time I was reading I was reading about the Israelites I'm going to see if I can find it and I felt like I should enter the Bible and slap them I know it's past, but it's like it's like they're not they're not they're not they don't love they don't love God. I still see that. I still see that. I still see that. I still see that. Mm. Numbers eleven one. It says, 
Soon the people began to complain about their hardship. And the Lord heard everything they said. Then the Lord's anger blazed against them. And he sent a fire to rage among them. And he destroyed some of the people in the outskirts of the camp. Numbers 14, 4. It said, then they plotted among themselves, let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Have you ever seen that? <laughs> I'm reading Bible, guys. These people actually wanted to go back. Have you guys seen that in your Bible? That, that thing vexed me after everything God did. He said, let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Numbers 14, 4. Check it. They've been delivered. Remember how you say, you see people with war. They pass war. They come back again. <laughs> Let us go back to our pitch and cage. It's better to be there than to be free. After everything Moses has been through. After everything God did. After all the miracles. Now let me read Numbers 14, 11 to 12. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people treat me with contempt? Will they never believe me? Even after all the miraculous signs I have done among them, I will disown them and destroy them with a plague. Then I will make you into a nation greater and mightier than they are. While I was reading it, I was crying. I said, Father, what is this? These people. They want to go back to Egypt. It's like after all Belema has sacrificed done, let's go back to our old ways. After all the fastings I've led you through, let's go back. After all the Holy Ghost encounters, let's go back. Even God says, I will disown them. I will destroy them with a plague. See, some people don't know the other side of God. They always say, ah, God is love, God is love. This kind of thing can provoke a regular human being. <laughs> Not to talk of, let's go back to, to Egypt of all places. No. <laughs> Do you remember what you went through there? How you cried and the Lord heard your cry? And say, I have come back. To, I have come down from heaven to save them. I've heard their cries. <laughs> I had to read that to you. Hearing that, how does it make you feel? <laughs> yeah. Bible. You guys read Bible sometimes, eh? And it will make you love God. And I started making God promises. I said, Father, no matter what, I'm not going back. Yeah. I'm not. I'm grateful. Even if everybody goes back, I won't. I will stay. That's why when God says, I love Belema, I love this, he's saying it. People don't know why. They think I'm just this one special person. No. The one day I pray to God, I say, Father, if there's anything you want me to do while I'm here, let me know if there's anyone that has filled the assignment and you feel like you need someone to continue it. Add it to my assignment. I'll help. I'll do it. I'm willing to take on more work. Because while I'm here, I have to work. When I'm gone, I can't work again. While it is day, we must work. While it is day. Because the ninth comment, when no man can work. So while I'm here, why will I be sitting down, eating, drinking, watching TV when there's work to do? Jesus said, my father is always working. So therefore, I too must work. This is what he came for, to work. To do the will of his father. The will is to work for his father. You see what I'm saying? So I said, for me to pray such prayer, God searches my heart so you can judge me whatever you want. But he knows what I say in the closet. If there's somebody that you gave work that did not do it and you're looking for somebody added to my work, I'll do it. Help me. Let's get it done. 
Because God is looking for laborers. The harvest is plenty. The few laborers that are there, some of them, the devil is killing them, taking them, convincing them to join them. So we that are still here that love God, we must not be lazy. We must work hard. We must, we must do what pleases our Father because the devil is winning souls for himself every day. Every day new false prophets are coming. New witches, new this. We, every day new believers need to come. That's why he's talking about feed, feed my sheep. Every day I come online preaching. It's the feeding that we're talking about. One person is getting saved at least. It's better than not doing anything. Then the few that are saved too might not be saved again. They may take them. So when we pray, our prayer point needs to start to change. You see, you see why God blessed Solomon like that? I was telling my mom, was it two days ago? Because Solomon did not ask for anything for himself. He asked for wisdom to be able to rule God's people. Wisdom so that he can rule them to please God. And God gave him more than that things he didn't even ask for. Fame. Wealth. And even promised him long life if he continues to obey him like his father did. So some of the things you think you need, you don't need them. What you need is to know what our father wants us to do. What makes him happy. Sometimes, you know how I see God? You see that chair? I see God as he's sitting there just worried. And I'm like, Father, what's wrong? One of my daughters, she didn't do what she didn't do what I told her. Okay, tell me what is it? Let me go do it. Will it make you happy? Yes, Belova. And you see me, man of God. Do you remember when I did world tour? My life was threatened, even in Liberia, you know. But I was on the move. Because I want to make When we go, what do we do, Pastor Philip? Work. 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 Do we, have we ever gone out to eat somewhere or have fun? No. no do we even see the country? We <laughs> it's don't. like airports to hotel to venue. Hotel. Back to hotel. Airport. Airport. Work. Work. So people, God sent them on assignment. Like the, the young prophet. Instead of him to keep the work. He went to be eating. Where God told him not to eat. And what happened? He died. God said, when you finish the assignment, go, take another road home. First of all, he's not even supposed to be sitting down taking breeze. Go. Go. The old prophet came and found them, lied to him. And he went to go and enjoy a goosey soup. And he got killed. So even food can be a distraction. Hey. There are times you don't need to eat. You need to fast. No, I'm serious. Sometimes you don't need to eat. Pastor Philip, you know I don't eat the programs except sometimes when I'm so hungry. Yeah. It's after program we start looking for food. We'll be in the room, all of us, we're just eating. One time me, you, Pastor Isaac and Kenya, they had to go find us soup. I had Ogbono and which one? The the, the, them Gensu. We, all, we were dipping into each other's soup because he was there, three of us. After a long 12 hours program, we they eat, they laugh. You would think these people, their life is so good. We just finished 12 hours. And the soup is not like it was the best because they didn't really know how to cook the way they were Nigerians. It was even only one restaurant. They drove like far to go get it for us. So sometimes you need to fast because the slightest thing, the thing that you didn't think could be a distraction could be what will kill you. Hey. Let us look to please our father. Even if we lose everything in the process of pleasing him, as long as God is smiling, we are happy. And when you have God on your side, is majority. That's all you need. 
Pastor Philip, if God would not with me, I will not survive all the persecution I've been through. You saw it. And it's not just surviving it. Ask him, have I ever asked money for program? No. At what time? And I'm always giving in your program. The moment I held the mic to preach, I gave 10,000 10, to all your choir members. And that lady, 1,000. I even watched the video again, heard that I gave the drama 20 grand. Right after the program, I sent you how much? Thousands of dollars in your paper. For I them. said, please settle them. And then they were messaging me, thanking me, because you gave it to them. So not only is God pleased with me, God blessed me financially. He's the God of riches, the God of wealth. My God shall supply all your needs. According to what? His riches. So there's riches. So when you have him and you have his riches, what more do you need? You have his protection. I've been to dangerous countries. He's my keyboardist. He's gone with me so he knows. Even in the time that life has been threatened, I went. So your goal is to make God this one on this scene. So you always listen to my messages I don't preach anything different from this my message is to bring you to love God in a way that you will be mocked in a way they will think you're crazy you know how I always play the instrumentals in fact I was even saying you need to make me more instrumentals that day I was down that day that I was having a moment you know the instrumental I played when I woke up God told me to play all your instrumentals. That's what I was playing. Because you know when I went to Europe and it was your instrumentals I had before my workers started doing instrumentals. I played it throughout my live video. That's what I was playing. And that thing has a way of healing you. Like look what he's playing. Sound does something. God so real to you because you keep hearing it and stuff and pastor you know I don't care about money I don't do nothing for myself I'm always giving you were in Nigeria I was praying and suddenly God said send him two thousand dollars you were shocked <laughs> you're like oh, this woman I don't know why he placed it in my heart but then again you were there you didn't plan to stay that long when you even came back, I was praying the day that God did one anointing for me here. While I was praying in the living room, he said, appreciate Pastor Philip, Prophet Shamar, and your cousin. So I sent you money. I sent Prophet Shamar money. I sent my cousin and with a note. I even told you, I said, God told me to. Yes. And that day after I did that, you know what happened? I came here because I don't know if you noticed, I now have this in my teeth. That old gap don't run. I told you many things have changed. Even the teeth. I think I just came from the first day I went to go put it on. Just thinking I will come and briefly worship it. Go, man of God. The kind of anointing I receive that day. You know when you think you're already anointed, but no, you are not because God may say you will be the most powerful woman of God, but it takes steps to get there. Years. You're not just going to be the most powerful woman from day one. It's a, a climbing a ladder. I receive a heavy anointing. God said, Belema, I will fight for you. I will fight for you. I have anointed you to, to, to shake nations or something. I don't even remember the exact things. And then he gave me Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. And then I was telling my mom, I said, God keeps reminding me that I also obey to celebrate, like to, to appreciate the men that have been in my life through this ministry. You know, you've always been supportive. Pastor Isaac has always been supportive. Prophet Shamar has always been supportive. And 
how else did he want me to but to sow seeds that you didn't even ask you you're always shocked when i'm sending you these things i hear from god i i do these things without anyone telling me and i get rewarded you see what i'm saying and i i told them this thing I, i'm saying now because i try to be honest with them so that they can learn from it so in case they are hearing to do that they don't struggle with it it's not that i'm showing off how else can i teach you the bible is good but god wants us our life to be an example yeah. for people to learn from that's why if you're working for god and your life is not an example re-examine yourself you need to repent because people are looking look at my son's life as an example other children are fasting the, the children in the back that made it they are fasting some people online in different parts of the world they are fasting one little girl of nine years old that seven days I'm talking about she did the seven day dry what? she no joke this ministry one sickle cell anemia girl did three days and I had to bless her with one thousand dollars yesterday she didn't take her medicine small girl of is it eight or nine Vera's daughter no excuses I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me if children that are, are sick can do it how about us adults even you being here for 24 hours it is that scripture that is working for you if not you're supposed to be sleeping now so let's see how we can please God in 2021 father how can I what more can I do to please you show me show me Pastor Philip, something powerful happened about 10 days ago. I was sleeping and God came to my room and was telling me about a lady. He said her name is Ruke, R-U-K-E. He said she's not known, but when she sings, his presence fills the room. That when I wake up, I should go look for her. I woke up, I went to YouTube I couldn't, I found, I put the name, I couldn't find it. Went on Facebook, I couldn't, went on Google, I couldn't find it. So I now put Ruke, gospel singer. Wow, she shows up. All the way in Benin City. <laughs> wow. And I went to play her song. Can somebody play that? Your grace has found me just as I am. Are you able to find it? You have it? You can play it on your laptop. It's called Before Before Ruke. And that song, I think a lot of people in this ministry can relate to that. And then she has another one too. Um, Sweetest Friend. She has Prince of Peace. And truly, she, her songs were loaded six months ago, four months, only like 200, 300 views. She wasn't known, but when I played the first song, you know like feel the current because he told me about her in the dream and I came on the video and I was telling them the dream and I was playing the songs I said God says when she sings his presence fills the room I didn't know God was using me to announce her before you know people started requesting and looking for our Facebook and say go watch Evangelist Princess Belemzi she's talking about you the girl came with a video commenting wow thank you Jesus I can't believe this I invited her on the live video and she said that three months ago her pastor's wife said God said I'm about to give you fame and four days before then she sowed a seed saying God should change her story and make her songs go all over the world Guess who God picked for that assignment? Me. In America. I don't 
know her. And before you know it, God led people to bless her. I emptied my cash up and paper and I put my information because she's in Nigeria. Pastor, the money was just going up on the screen. I gave 3000 The girl was just shouting, wow, wow, ooh, you need to watch that video. The shock catch. Because you're seeing the money climb up like you are. <laughs> Everybody, in one day, I mean two days, she got over 1,000 new subscribers. All the ministry people were subscribing to her on YouTube, sharing her songs. It is only someone that is obedient that God can give such an assignment. Pastor Philip, you know I worship too. I sing too. I'm not saying I'm a professional, but it's not about me. God wants to promote somebody else. And I'm willing to bring it to my platform for everyone to support. She gave a testimony too. She was crying. I song, the video came out on the 25th. God appeared in my dream. Told me to make sure everybody shares that song. So after giving out the money, talking about I still got work to do. Because if people around you would not do it, God will find somebody else to do it. And God said, the way that I'm is using me to announce her is the same way he will use somebody to announce me. Ah. somebody with a greater platform with a greater office it takes obedience to do this because some people are so selfish ah. oh what about me it's going to affect my ministry people will like them more than me I can sing too but no I don't care about myself remember deny yourself we are we are no more us. It is no longer I. I am no longer the one here. It is Jesus Christ that lives in me. And God put the love of her and her songs in the heart of people. Because this is God's doing. People were giving money. Many people, one lady gave some small money. Before you know, she got a miracle money of 6,000 bucks. Testimonies have been coming in like, because when God is moving, move it, God. Otherwise, you'll be left behind. So people were moving like that, and God was doing things in their life. Because I gave Belema the assignment. That's what God is saying. And those who support the assignment, I will bless them. When God is ready to bless you, anyone that tries to disrupt that, disrupt it or mess with it, that person will be cut off. Nobody can stop it. And that's how a total stranger that we don't know. Now we all sing our songs. Please play it if you have it. Play it loud. Let everybody hear it. Before, before. Make it loud. The loudest you can give it. Don't worry, you'll get it right. She has many, but this one speaks a lot. Mm. Is that the loudest? Good.
of her song, there's another one that's called Let's Prince of Peace. Got, okay. Prince of Peace, and then there's another one, Sweetest Friend. So we're going to listen to Prince of Peace, and then after that, it will be Sweetest Friend. She has like eight songs, but these were the three that I played online. That first one, that one just talks about everybody. Your grace found me just as I am. Before, before, I no get anywhere I did go. And my story be that now. Where would they go before? Go <laughs> <laughs> go anyway. It's true. But now look at us now. It's grace. Are you ready? Prince of Peace.
those of you watching online, you can find her on YouTube. Her name is Ruke. Somebody spell it out. R-U-K-E. Last name is G-U-R-E. Gure. This next one that we want to play is called Sweetest Friend. Her songs are about Jesus, holiness. You see, for God to be telling somebody about you in their dream, your songs have to be about him. So let us, we're going to listen to, after that, Sweetest Friend, we'll listen to your holiness and that'll be it. But God is making me do this because it's still part of the announcement for her. Go ahead. Clap for Jesus. 
We didn't know her before, but I'm watching all of your mouth. You guys know this song. This is just like 10 days ago. And you guys have been playing her songs. Please, were you guys feeling God's presence as you were playing it? So what he told me in the dream, I'm even vibrating. The next one I want to play is Your Holiness. After that one, funny thing, I woke up. What is that noise? Who is singing Christmas carol? Thing? Eh? Ah. So, every time I wake up, I'm waking up with one of her songs. And then when I go live, I'll just be playing it. You have your holiness. Let's listen to that.
The power of dreams. I didn't know her before, but God came in my dream and he said, when she sings, his presence fills the room. He says she's not known. And he told me when I get up, I should go look for her. I woke up and I obeyed immediately. And before you know, she came on my video the same day. People from the video started messaging her. They didn't know her, but when I gave the name, they started looking for that name on Facebook, sent a friend request and said, a woman of God is talking about you. And that's how she came on the video. Very humble, beautiful soul. This lady is, you could tell she loves God. When God announces you like that, it doesn't matter what anyone says about you. It doesn't matter what anyone thinks about you. God took his time to go to somebody's dream. And even as I was playing this, he said, this is still part of the assignment he gave me to announce her. Because we have over almost a thousand people watching right now. Some of them have never watched us before. And we put her name out. Everything is strategic. God is doing it. Now. So she will get more subscribers to that. She'll be wondering what's happening. She thought that whole first time and that money was it. No. She's sleeping, but God is still working. And if somebody can do this, it's someone that is selfless. Because these days, everybody cares about what they will gain. How does it benefit me? How does it benefit my ministry? What ministry? Who gave you the ministry? The same God who gave you the assignment. So if you don't do it, you will lose that ministry. You will lose all these people here. Nothing happening here is an accident or coincidence. Everything is planned by God. Because when I wanted to play three songs, they said I should add your holiness. How can somebody that sings so well like this talks about Jesus? Nobody knows her. But see, God knows her. And when is your time? God will announce you. But you have to keep working. Keep loving God. Keep believing. Keep seeking. She wasn't looking for fame. It was prophesied to her. And she said she didn't even know how it will happen. Because sometimes maybe she's not connected to anybody popular. She doesn't know anybody. You know, sometimes you could be in a place where all the people you know around you, the highest help they can give you is they've given already. You can't think of anyone. <laughs> like right now, some of you are like, the person always helping me. They've already given me all their help. Who else? Will, who knows me? God knows you. When you love God, when you are in Christ, the only connection you need is Jesus. And he will connect you to who he wants to connect you to. Stop trying to please people to attach yourself to people. Thinking those people are the ones that will bring you fame or shine or whatever. No. They need help too. <laughs> they need help too. And when man helps you, sometimes they rub it in your face. Sometimes they make fun of you. Like it's like you owe them too much. You owe them your life. You have to keep living to please them. You can't be yourself anymore. And after all the help I've helped, shut up. Shut up. That's why God will leave that man and go look for somebody else to do it. A stranger that doesn't know you, they don't even want anything from you. Like I'm here talking about her. She doesn't know I'm talking about her. I don't want nothing from her. I just know what God told me. And I want God to be pleased. He says his presence fills the room. Meaning he's pleased with her. And her songs. So I would rather play songs of someone that pleases my father. Than play a popular song that my father doesn't even recognize their voice. Some people will do that. They'll play that one because it's their friend. 
but it doesn't move God. God is not there. I love you, my friend. I'm helping you. Go work on your relationship with God and come back to me. Then I can help you. But now, because when you are helping somebody that God is not with, you will sink with them. You will drown, you will drown with them. But when you are helping someone that God is with them, as they go, you go. As they grow, you grow. As they succeed, you succeed. The grace will rub off on you. But if you are helping someone that is suffering dryness, the dryness will affect you. Did you see what happened to the prodigal son? The Bible says no one gave him anything. He was experiencing dryness when money finished. He almost wanted to eat food meant for the pigs. The man that hired him for the pig stuff, why didn't he give him food? If anyone had helped that man, he would never have come back to his senses. He would never have come home to his father. So nobody helped him. And that's when he started thinking. Said, in my father's house, even the, the slaves, they have enough food to eat. Even if my father would not take me back as a son, let me go and be one of the servants. But the people were trying to do brotherly uh, loyalty to man, trying to help him. You think he would think of his father's house? So, when you try to help people that God is trying to get their attention, you're working against God. You see what happened to Jonah? He entered that boat. They were all going to drown. But the moment they threw him out, everything went back to normal. You see what happened to Elijah? The woman gave him food to eat. And she and her son and her family had a lot to eat. God was with him. So the grace that God put on him rubbed off on her. They were able to eat. So God is with this one. And God told me to talk about her. So whatever is working for her now, it's going to work for me. And all Princess Belemzi ministry members that are obedient. I saw you guys singing the song. I was like, Father, look at that. We just introduced this 10 days ago or 9 days ago. You guys have mastered her songs. Just because you heard that God says his presence. Because you love God. So you will help God. Announce his daughter. Because it pleases God. And heaven will be happy that you did this. Let's not make ministry or loving God about ourselves. Let it be about our Father. And then we'll enjoy Him so much. People are looking for connection. Music industry, like Pastor Philip, is, he knows a lot of gospel artists. He knows how Nigeria is, it's who you know. If you don't know nobody, that lady knows Jesus. She sang about him. She sings about him. She loves him. And Jesus showed up for her. And he's still showing up for her until now. She said, Jesus, you are my sweetest, greatest friend. Some people will come and sing something that will be pleasing to the world. But she just, she wasn't looking for popularity. She just wanted to talk about her Jesus look what he did Pastor Philip I believe that God allowed me to play her songs for you to hear because I'm sure God will touch you because you know all the people that are in the gospel the big ones and God will tell you to do something she's very anointed God spoke of her to a total stranger. This is what we read about in the Bible, right? It's coming to life. The money I sent her, the 10000 that we all contributed, it was finally yesterday that her bank released it. Almost three million naira. She was sleeping while I was talking about her. 
She said something woke her to go use the bathroom, not knowing that God woke her up to come see her announcement in America. <laughs> what do you have to say about this? I know you were not there, so you don't know. While you were playing the song, the first thing that came to my mind was uh, to ask um, who should like to connect with in the gospel industry. Wow! Somebody shout hallelujah! What did I say? I said God will speak to you about her. Because he knows them. They're his friends. All those ones. Before you know, he's going to connect them. They'll sing with her. But he's also led by the Spirit of God. She has a sound. A very powerful sound. Um, that I believe that uh, the world needs to know about. And um, I want to say that uh, I will be committed to her until she gets there. Hallelujah. On every layer, on every level. I'm going to make some calls once we're done with this in this new year um, by uh, on the 2nd. And if you probably ask her who she'd like to connect with, um, you know, the thing with singing is, like you said, there are a lot of very, very talented people in different parts of the world and especially in the country in Nigeria, there are a lot of gifted people, but some of them will never be known. She said it too. Some of them will never be known because every man needs a man. Um, you said, you made a very powerful statement. God has given you this instruction to do as you are announcing her. You said that someone else probably that God has also positioned will also come and announce you but that's just the way how that's just how it works when you plant a seed somewhere you expect you're expecting it to grow when 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 you plant a mango seed you're not expecting an orange fruit you should expect the mango the mango tree back um and so, uh, we would do whatever we can to make sure she locates someone in this industry. Sometimes, just like you're doing now, if she collaborates with another major artist, that would bring a ministry. More people to will own, go to our YouTube channel. Oh, another level. So, whenever she's ready, we're ready. I'll she's let ready her know. tomorrow. She's ready the day after. But I believe God arranged it like this so that you two can hear her sound. She has a, she has, she has a ministry sound. Uh, I listened to all the song and like you said, I noticed that the song, they're in the same pattern. Uh, talking about God, talking about God, talking about God, talking about God. It is more about God more so than, it's a different sound because the majority of the sound in Nigeria now is more about, it's more about we. Chai. Um, it's more about uh, what we need that we don't have that we're asking God to give to us. It's more about the miracles. It's more about the, the, the signs that we're looking for. And so, but sometimes we have to be careful too because some of our tears come from emotion, not out of a, deep, a depth of love for God. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been here before where you raise up your hand and you're praying and you're crying but the cry is not because uh, the anointing rested upon you it's because you need to pay a bill back home. That's happened to you before? Oh yeah you're crying because <laughs> I, can't, I need you to help me. I need, send me, send me and you open your mind and say bah, bah, oh, ah, bah, oh. and your mind is is in the bill that needs to be paid 
and tears are dripping, tears are dripping. And so some of our songs are born out of that. And it's, you have to be very careful not to mix that emotion with your genuine love for God. You notice that there are certain songs that you may not sing or that you may not feel the anointing if it does not address your need. But what she's doing is that she's lifting up songs that is filled with the power of God, but it's not necessarily in those directions. It draws you closer to Jesus. It pulls you closer to him. So it's a different sound, and she has the sound in her voice as well. This is why we must push her until she gets the no stop. Amen. So, um, if you talk to her, if I get an opportunity to talk to her, too, so we can see how we can enter. And God started her with a ministry that is international. Yes. Because many people watching are in like different parts of the world. So she's already planted in many places, and they are using it to worship. I I, I noticed some of them. Some of you are probably having. You are probably having on repeat. <laughs> you have it on repeat. It's one thing for people to play your song and get closer to God than to just play your song and just enjoy it because it's good. Her songs make you get closer to God, make you speak in tongues, make you cry, make you... That's what God means by His presence fills the room. Makes you repent. And because God is the one involved in this, she will go far. In fact, as you were talking, God told me that People will be begging to sing with her, but she will even reject some. Because God is involved and God will choose, pick and choose who she works with. So she's not tainted. Because in that industry, you got to be careful. People, when they see that everybody wants you, everybody wants to approach you. At some point, the women tell you, remove Jesus from your song and put God. Yeah, I've seen, I've heard that. So there will be tests, there will be things that will come. When fame starts to come, all these things. But God just told me, he said, there are some people that she will reject. And they will be looking big, but they too, they want to use her to shine. You understand what I'm saying? But there are some people that God will allow her to work with. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God, it's not so about the fame. It's more about, Lord, what are you saying? Do you see what I'm saying? The person may come, the offer may be so nice and sweet and nice, but God is saying, no. No. Yeah. no. <laughs> and you're like, but you need it. You're the one. I can't. I'm sorry. God doesn't want me to. Uh, I don't know. I just heard that. Because the way she's going to go, God is up to something. But that's also to strengthen your faith. All of you here. Why you are thinking that God don't forget you? God is not concerned about your case. Somebody is some sleeping somewhere. And God is telling them your name, your address, your phone number. And even if the person always forgets their dream or vision, that particular one, they will remember it so vividly. Even the number, the phone number. God will make sure they remember it. And God will make them restless until they do what he has told them. Have you not seen how you have assignment and you're trying to delay and it's like yeah. like you can't even do nothing. You can't eat. You can't do nothing. Even to sow seed. God they to sow seed. Some of you that are so not some of you here. Maybe the ones online. Not the- <laughs> they will say no, not me. Oh my God. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Pastor, you know, say, people, when it comes to sowing seed, they like too many confirmations. <laughs> Triple confirmation. <laughs> Let me tell you. Sure. <laughs> I want to shock you. You don't know this because me and you haven't talked since. I had a dream in October, October 13th. God came in my dream. I had the same dream four times one night. God gave me a name. You know Pastor Lawrence Oyo? God said I should give him $25,000. I haven't talked to him for years. 
four times in one dream. Wow. I woke up. I, I went to go message him. He didn't respond. I looked for a way to contact him because I lost his contact. Man of oh God, this thing bothered me every day. Even when I messaged, I finally found a way to get to his assistant. That one was doing like, oh, okay, please, what is it about? You know how? I want to give you more new. I'm coming to bless you. <laughs> he finally gave me his number. And he wasn't sure it was me. He too was, you know what I mean? Like, I say, if only you know why I'm trying to reach you. <laughs> wow. I say, Father, there are people here looking for things. They don't have it. This one looked like he doesn't want it. I almost didn't want to do it because I was getting irritated by the whole protocol process. I wanted to just let it go, but it wouldn't leave me. It's like, I have to do it. That's how you know it's God. Like, you may get mad and say you won't do it, but you can't sleep well. Yeah. The dream will keep flashing. Mm -hmm. It's also a test for you to see your patience level, yeah. to see your commitment to obedience. Yeah. I said, I said, man of God, please give me your information. Please, I need to give you this money. I was begging him to sow my seed. He couldn't believe. He thought I was joking until later. He said, are you for real? He said, he thought I was a scammer trying to scam him. He now realized it was the true me. He said, ah, Princess International. I said, ah, you know, so now you know it's me because it's 25,000. <laughs> International Princess. I said, he said, sorry, I did not know because they've been using my name to scam because the same way they use my name to scam people. They've been using his name to create accounts. So he was so careful. He said, so when I sent it, send him the receipt. He said, this is humbling. <laughs> this is the way he, he couldn't believe it. Like there's nobody that will just dish out 25 grand looking for you to give you. Yeah. <sighs> like you're losing patience. I need to give you this money. God said, I should make sure it doesn't pass this year. Do you know it's a seed you're sowing? In 2021, when you see massive harvest, yeah. they will hate on you, say you are proud, you are arrogant. They don't know the seed you've sown. They don't know what you've... They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. You see me getting my own private jet, seeing, not that I'm buying it, people like it. You see people favoring me. Don't forget when I was looking for someone to sow the seed that God instructed me to. All these things you're doing, you think it's going to go in vain? Oh, no. 2020, 21 is a year of massive harvest for those of you that have been obedient to God all through this year. Yeah. You will just relax and be seeing blessings pouring. So when he sees so in some people, they'll say, well, I've tried to contact him. I can't, so it's over. Bye. No, I was restless until I found that man. At some point, I'm like, I don't think this guy knows that I'm serious. He thinks I'm joking. It was later, later that he's a ah, princess international, international princess. Because <laughs> he knows me. But he wasn't sure. He thought I was joking. You know, like somebody, okay, come on, Pastor Philip, no vex. Let's, let's break this down. You are somewhere praying to God. Uh -huh. And somebody you haven't talked to in a while, that when you talk to them, because Pastor Lawrence, when he knew me in 2016, I was broke. <laughs> and that Very person, broke. he did not know life has changed. And maybe he thought I wanted to beg him money. Ah, probably. <laughs> thinking about it, it could, so good and the person is contacting you, begging you, please, I need to, and you're like, ah, this girl, let's not leave me alone. No, no, she wants to give you money. <laughs> no, no, everybody think of, because the last time you remember the person, they were broke. I couldn't even pay lunch for 20, $19, be 20 for my son. 
and they are bugging you four years later. You are thinking maybe hardship has finished them and they are looking for help. <laughs> That's why we should be careful. We should make sure we understand things before we go and conclude. Yeah. We will miss out. And then suddenly, all of you here, even those online, come on now. The person now finally, you tell the person, tell me what is it. They're like, I need to talk to you. They say, tell me now, tell me. And the person said, God told me to give you 25,000, but it looks like you're not ready. Please, I'm, what we did? <laughs> what, what, what did you say? <laughs> My middle name is Rusio. <laughs> you say, pardon, pardon me? Pardon? <laughs> Pastor Philly, I've been waiting for your reaction. This thing eh, is unbelievable. We're not talking $25, not $250, not 2500 Huh? In a time of coronavirus pandemic, I haven't talked to you for almost four years. International princess. <laughs> Language change. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, everybody put yourself in because you thought maybe the person needs something from you, but that's exactly what happened with the lady by the well. Um, he asked her for a drink. Mm -hmm. She actually thought he needed water, but go read that scripture. She never gave him water to drink, but she gained so much from him. She became useful, she became an evangelist, went and brought people to him. She got her deliverance. Because remember she had married how many men? Five. It didn't work. For the first time, she was not concerned about the man in the house. She went to work for Jesus. Come see a man who told me everything about my... Like, he knows everything about me. She became useful before. There was nothing. She was not doing anything. Fetch water, marry, marry. The only job she had was marriage. Seriously, but it started as if he needed something. Give me a drink. But she was the one that really needed help. I quoted that scripture for that man of God. I say, if only you know who it is that is asking for a drink and the gift that God has for you, you will ask me for living water. The man did not understand because I wanted to get angry and delete them, the whole thing. I gave him that scripture. He's, but I was still restless. I felt like I needed to do this. What am I trying to say? I say when God gives you an assignment, the more you disobey, the more sick you feel yeah. in the stomach. And it's not even about the person. It's about God. That's why when we do something for people, we don't expect anything from them. We may not even see them again. Like he said, God will use people to bless you. God will not come down on his own. Like, look at this woman now. God used a woman to talk about her. And now, Pastor Philip, by God's, God told me he will speak to him. I didn't know he already spoke to him. So, before you know, that's how it will start. Connection. God will make the connection. And that man, I don't think till today he understands. First of all, he will be wondering how. How Belema grow like this? How? You know what 25K is? In a pandemic. That's a lot. Pastor, when I do party, <laughs> I won't see that kind of money. <laughs> you know now, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. When you please him, he will give you everything you need. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and money, everything, all those other things. He said, I did. Meaning, Papa will just pour it on you like that. Like this. When I posted that, God told me to post when I sent the money to him. Of course, people would think you're boasting, but 
God uses it to teach people. If Belema can relieve such, and I'm telling you to sow 50, you are, you are here struggling. Look at somebody sowing 25 grand. God can use your post that he told you to preach to 1 million people. And it will cause them to do, to obey immediately. Yes. Somebody on Instagram, God led me to their comment. He said, this woman, stop deceiving your followers. How big is your ministry that you are giving somebody 25,000? Lies. I laugh. <laughs> Pastor Philip, in February, you were right here. How much did I give you for your program? It's 20K. I better talk on for Mike. 20,000. And then that same day, how much did I give everyone that was sitting here? Did I also add 500 to your 20K? Yes. So with the 20K, I see, because you were in this room, you got 500. Yes. The man say, how big is your ministry that you are deceiving your followers? God said, look at them. They don't know. Two days ago, Nina was praying. And God told her, he said, Belema will be a billionaire. But I'm making people think she will be a millionaire because I don't want them to think she's bragging. She wrote it and sent it to me. God is telling people, how will I not be a billionaire? I don't use money for myself. I use it for God. When God sees that you're about his business, he will give you a lot. But if I was using it to go and acquire things to please myself, God told me I am his bank here that he can withdraw from whenever he's ready. So the money you have thinking is your money, it is God's money. Let him be able to withdraw. Guess what? God started with me and now is working on my followers. One of my followers, her name is Anita. Three days ago or two, three days ago. The same thing that happened to me nine, ten days ago. Because God will start with the head and then to prepare them so that when their own comes, they're like, oh, woman of God. It's similar to woman of God. Right? This lady was praying. She heard a name. She went to sleep. The name appeared. And she went to look for her. The moment she went on Instagram, she saw her. In the dream, God told her to give her 500. The woman is in Tanzania or something as a missionary in the village, village, village. She sent her 500. And she says, Sister, I was just praying to God that they should send me help from the four corners of the earth. She was shaking that this money came on time. She was quick to obey because I just had one with Ruke. You don't see. So when God does these things, you would think I'm bragging, but you better learn because your own is coming. Your own assignment is coming. And now, because you have learned from my example, now we've talked about Anita. Man, when your own come, the moment you wake up, you're doing it. You're not wasting time. But before, you would not understand. You'll be like, I don't know her. I don't. You know what I mean? So all this is teaching to prepare you. So you don't fail your test. This is a ministry that things are supernatural. We don't look for help. Pastor Philip, that room you saw there. God told me the person he wants to do that room. It's a man of God. One of my workers, pastor. Talk best pastor. Pastor Manny or something. I don't know if you know him. God told me he's using. I heard it clearly. The same way God led me to your page to find Tokbe. God led me to Tokbe's page. Tokbe had done his birthday last year. And I don't know how I found it. I don't know how. You know, sometimes God will make you find something. You don't even know how you found the thing. Sometimes it could have been one year ago. If somebody asks you, how did you reach there? You don't really know. Or maybe the person will just share it that they don't know they are sharing it for you. Tokbe was doing violin in the background. And God said, save that picture. I saved it. I don't know why. Few days later, he said, ask Tokbe who did that background. I asked him. We were here, right? He said, this is pastor. And I said, 
God says, is locating your pastor with this job. That he must be the one to do it. I said, can you call him? They were all here. The man came immediately, right? While we're sitting here, I said, pastor, God wants me to tell you to do this. And he said that it has to be you. He said, okay, very humble man. Love him. The man was showing me other pictures. I have new designs, new one. He showed me, in there. I said, the one in the picture. What are you learning here? God is specific. Don't try to make them change your mind. If God said, don't put any upgrade. You don't need no upgrade. Give it to him the way he showed you. So the pastor finally said, okay. I said, how much do you think it will be? All of us, how much were you thinking? 5,000? My face is there laughing. Because they were all here. This thing is like play, play. I was thinking highest 10 grand. Man of God. The guy go do budget. Send me on WhatsApp. <laughs> Can you guess how much? You know, I haven't talked to you since. Just guess now. It was more than 10,000. 15. Just you, how much as you enter that room? What did you say that room cost? It's very expensive. It costs more than 15. <laughs> You're not giving me a big on that. $20,800. What? I showed all of them. <laughs> they shout. <laughs> They're like, oh no, that's expensive. Even me, I say, oh no. No, I thought it was like 10 grand. Because you know, you see a picture, you like it. It's when it's time for you to go find out how much. <laughs> Just like people see us do programs, but they don't know how much I spend for the program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do yeah, one yeah. program and they go bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> we don't see them again. <laughs> Have you seen some people? They do one program. That's it. That's it. It's ministry over. don't finish. It's beginning yeah. and closing. Of the In ministry. fact, their Facebook is deactivated. <laughs> I'm telling you. So I now said, Ah, Father, this is a lot. But he broke down everything he will do. Very detailed man. I said, Father, if this is you that really want me to do this, because this is a lot. Wow. But God said he was using it to locate the man. I said, give me confirmation or show me a sign. So I went to sleep. When I woke up, God said, Belema, check your PayPal and your cash up. Check how much you have. I don't know how the money went up like that, but my PayPal and my cash app total was $21,000. Not my bank account. I mean money that came into the account. He said, okay, go pay him. Tell him you will do it. And I'll message my workers. I say, I'm going to do it. God says I should do it. Well, you're not shocked. Mavis, you were shocked. But that's me with assignments. When God himself has provided the money. Who are you to say, I can't? I immediately called the pastor. He came to my house. I wrote a check. Just last week or so, or two weeks ago, Tokbe told me, the one that told me about the pastor, said, the pastor says, since he did that job for me, before I asked him when he came, I said, how many jobs like this do you get in a year? He said, like, maybe, how I many, two? He said, since he did that job, People have been calling him for jobs. It's like that thing opened. That no. thing, that thing was deliverance. That thing was. So the room was not even about me. It was locating wow. God's servant. Wow. That God Himself provided the money. I didn't come online to raise money from nobody. That's how you see that room. And we still had to buy a keyboard. The same one is there. You saw it? Yes, I saw it. We had to buy some more things. So I spent extra 10 grand there, right? But I don't feel it. Do you know when 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 I came out from Nigeria? Airports were like closed and everywhere was. You know, my flight was the last Delta that left Nigeria. 
my landlord here sent a letter like mail to everybody in this building telling them about the opportunity things available for small business like grants or loans or something so I saw the email as I was opening it God said what are you doing I said I just want to know what's there he said no you don't need that tell him you will pay one year rent in a period of pandemic you know I paid one year rent last year I now message the landlord. I say, Man, um, how much is a year rent? They say, oh, we don't do one year contract. Do you want to do three years or five years? I say, no, I don't do contracts. Because with God, you don't know how he's going to move you. Next year, I may be in a bigger place or I may be in another country. We don't know. We don't make long term. Because Holy Spirit can just, you can wake up tomorrow and you're not here. You're in another place. Yeah. And, I, and the guy gave me the total. 70, almost 70 something, almost 80,000. I brought the money, the, the cashier's check here. I told my workers to tap to it before I paid the man. They were all touching it, <laughs> even him. Pandemic season. One year is paid. Some people have closed and left, right? Because this thing has affected a lot of businesses. People are going bankrupt. Even churches are closing. But where you are sitting is paid for. For one year. Somebody clap for Jesus. And not that I came online to ask for money or from my followers. We mostly listen to the word laugh. We have a lot of fun in this ministry. We hardly talk money. Most times they were even raising to help people. Not really helping the ministry or anything. Maybe your regular offering or tithes. Because if I start raising money every time to do things, I can't give these testimonies that I'm giving. You know? I can't say it like this. I'm hearing this song. You provide the, the fire. Something like that. I sacrifice. I don't know. I don't know that song, but I'm hearing it. Do you, anybody know that song? If you pour spirit. Who knows how to sing it? I will open up inside. If you provide the fire Hey! 
waters fill me, fill me, oh God, fill me, fill me, Jesus, with your spirit. Set fill me, fill me up. I said, fill me up, fill me, till I overflow, till I, say, I want to run over. Fill me up, fill me, till I overflow, I want to run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over, over and over, over and over, over and over, over and over. Fill me, fill me till I overflow. I want to run over. Cast me, 
God for 2020. But get ready for 2021. Prepare for 2021. While some people are sleeping, you decide to spend it in God's presence. Just tell him thank you. 
Oh, Father. If only you know why you were sleeping, God was working. God was blocking evil arrows. God was cleansing. God was protecting your children, your husband, your wife, your business. All these things that happened did not come near you. Psalm 91 works for you. In fact, your life is a testimony. What is the Lamb? What is the Lamb? What is the Lamb? Ah. Holy.
There is none like 
It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful day. 